meteorologist Brian Peters with your weather extreme video for Sunday, March the 20th. This is actually the first full day of spring, but it doesn't feel that way this morning. There's a look at our uh, infrared satellite image, and we do have some clouds across the southern uh, row of counties in, in Alabama, and we do have a few clouds in the northeast quadrant. Looks like it'll be a mostly sunny day for the most part for most sections of the state, but we may see some clouds as the upper trough bottoms out around uh, midday and into the afternoon. The surface map shows the front has moved off the coast and is uh, stretching across Florida, while in the meantime, high pressure is settling in over uh, the lower Mississippi River Valley from the west. In the upper atmosphere, we do have this closed low over uh, northern Missouri, and that is... Uh, bringing a trough around the base of that closed low. And again, that will bottom out today. So it looks like this afternoon we should see uh, some mix of sun and clouds. Temperature is a little bit colder than we've seen for a couple of weeks. We haven't seen temperatures quite this chilly since back around the first part of March. Uh, across central Alabama, temperatures generally in the 30s. Now, uh, at the time of this map. Uh, it was just before sunrise, so I expect most spots to probably dip into the upper 30s for the most part. Uh, the winds has stayed up as we expected, so it doesn't look like there's been much, if any, frost. Frost is a, still a possibility on uh, Monday morning, and we'll get to some of the uh, uncertainties there in just a moment. Watch warning map shows that we do have uh, a large number of uh, uh, freeze advisories or freeze warnings in effect. That's that dark blue area. Uh, some of the cyan areas are uh, frost watches or freeze watches. Uh, so, and then over the uh, southeast part of Texas, we have some fire weather danger with uh, dry conditions. QPF wise, uh, much of the rain that you see on the QPF map here, the quantitative precipitation forecast, uh, is actually going to come at the end of the period. This is four or five days. And this ends uh, Friday morning, and it looks like much of that rain will come probably with the system on Thursday and into early Friday. Storm Prediction Center outlooking a uh, possibility of some thunder in the northwestern United States across South Florida and potentially across Tennessee as that uh, upper low bottoms out across our area. For day two, thunderstorms confined to the northwestern part of the United States. And for day three, we have a, a kind of a row of thunderstorms all the way from uh, Iowa all the way back to the west to uh, Oregon. Now let's get to the modeling this morning. There's a look at our trough that will be bottoming out this afternoon as it uh, as it moves through the southeastern United States. So once again, we do have some risk that we'll see some uh, showers or perhaps a sprinkle or two, but it looks like it'll be confined primarily to the northeastern uh, corner of Alabama and is likely to stay just uh, to the north. So it looks like central Alabama will see a mix of sun and clouds today. The trough moves off the east coast very rapidly. This is Monday, just 24 hours from uh, 1 o'clock today to 1 o'clock on Monday. Moves off very quickly and high pressure settles in. Now here's the problem that we have, the uncertainties we have for Monday. It looks like the wind may stay up. Uh, and if the wind stays up through the sunrise hour, it's probably likely that we will not see much in the way of widespread frost. Now, with that said, any of those sheltered valleys could see frost because they're going to uh, be, uh, those sheltered areas will, the wind in those areas will actually go calm. And so we may see some uh, patchy frost. And that's probably why the National Weather Service in Birmingham has not issued any kind of frost warnings um, because of the uncertainty there of, of exactly what will happen. But we certainly will see temperatures dip down into the mid and perhaps lower 30s. Uh, so we'll have to keep an eye on that, but it looks like it'll be just kind of a glancing blow as far as the frost goes. By Tuesday at midday, the uh, upper trough has gone and we're under an upper ridge. The upper ridge stays with us on Wednesday. So Tuesday and Wednesday are going to be warming days. By Wednesday, we'll probably be seeing low, uh, highs into the uh, lower 70s. Thursday, that next system comes across the Great Lakes as it ejects out of the central Rockies, and it will be dragging a cold front across the Ohio and Tennessee River Valleys and down into the Gulf Coast. Uh, it looks like uh, the best dynamics with a 988 uh, millibar surface low up over Michigan, southern uh, part of Michigan. It looks like the dynamics are going to be much further north, but it does also look like there's going to be enough cape down this way that we may hear some thunder. 
Storm Prediction Center is not out looking anything for day five, and this what this would be would be day five, but they do mention that there is some possibility. Uh, again, the dynamics seem to be the best for the north, but we'll certainly have to watch because the instability appears to be there with values on the order of 1,500 to 2,000 joules per kilogram. Friday uh, is another transition day as uh, that trough moves off into northern uh, New England and the southeast Canadian provinces, and we come again under more or less a zonal flow, but a uh, slight uh, ridge to it, and the uh, high over Ohio should uh, give us a, a, very, a very pleasant day on Friday. As temperatures drop back a little bit, we'll probably see highs in the mid and upper 60s, but it certainly won't be that chilly. Saturday, we're already watching the next system, and also Saturday is uh, interesting. Saturday and Sunday are both interesting because we have some tremendous model differences. We're going to go through the GFS first. There's uh, not much to deal with here. It looks like uh, a southwesterly flow, so we could see some moisture. But at the surface, uh, the GFS is forecasting a fairly strong high, and it does look like off to our northeast over uh, you know southern New England, and it does look like we might see a wedge pattern, which could indeed generate some precipitation, usually of the light variety, over the southeastern U.S. Now, the GFS continues to develop that system coming at us. So Sunday, it comes across the Mississippi River Valley, and that would uh, generate a surface low that would be close over uh, western Kentucky with a cold front trailing down through Alabama. That certainly has the look of severe weather. <clears throat> and if we look at the Cape values... Uh, they more or less support that as we get values that are once again in the, in the say, 1,400 to 2,000 range. Now, let's go and look at what the European is saying, and this is Saturday. The European is saying Saturday is going to be just fine, that there's not going to be any problems at all. It puts the high uh, basically over the eastern Great Lakes and uh, is not even suggesting anything in, in the way of a wedge pattern. And then on Sunday... Uh, the GFS is developing something in the central uh, part of the United States, but it's much slower. Uh, and now we're seeing some thunderstorms down in the, the Gulf area. But that would be for central and north Alabama, probably at least uh, the day starting out dry. So some model differences in there that we will have to reconcile. But it's a long way out. We're on the verge of voodoo country. So uh, we'll resolve those as we get closer. Looking out into voodoo country, the 30th of March, it looks like we close out uh, March on a fairly calm note as we see a weak ridging over the area. The next system comes in around the 2nd of April, and that one certainly is a low-latitude system. Certainly gives us the look of severe weather potential. And then by the end of the period, around the 4th of April, we're back to a southwesterly flow with a weak ridging going on. So the good news is that there's uh, no real uh, extremes in the way of temperatures uh, that the GFS is uh, suggesting. That'll do it for the Weather Extreme video for this morning. Uh, James Spann should be back with the next edition first thing on Monday. In the meantime, stay tuned to the blog for notes on Alabama's weather. I'm meteorologist Brian Peters. Have a great day and Godspeed.